Gomez. Walto makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello and welcome to Burkamp Wonderland, an Arsenal apocalypse, and the only survivors from ABW is me, Josh, one of Carl's legs, part of Nicky's nipples, and Femi, who is currently slumming it somewhere very warm because he's on holiday. The rest of them, if anybody, if any um, upstart podcast need any people, you let me know. We'll do you a good deal. You can have a carpenter for half a shilling, and who else is there? I mean, Jeff Arsenal's virtually retired. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think the clinic have not let John out for quite a while now, and he's uh, full of vaccinations. And it's it's not helping at all. And the rest, I can't even remember their names. It's been so long since I've seen any of them. Uh, Josh, how does it feel in this po podcasting apocalypse of basically it's you, me, and Carl's leg? I mean, I'm I'm glad I've made the cut. Uh, glad I could uh, could appear. I can't think who else is there. We've got well, we've got the Gunasphere rabble, but you know they're a bit like um, in Mad Max. They're the ones with the gasoline. That's it. They're keeping that to themselves. They're not coming over to help us. And they as often the Gunasphere lot in in that the WhatsApp group is just like a Jock. It's um, Daniel and James have got those electric cattle prods. They just spend all day. Zzz, Z zapping Jock, trying to make him perform. Yeah, oh, it's not working for him, is it? And then we've got um, we've got Fife, who is on holiday, perpetually on holiday, and um, you know how a lot of us uh, Arsenal fans we've been quite um, sad that we've not been in Europe this season. Well, <laughs> you got a feel for the uh, the journalists. You know, uh, Simon Collins has had so many holidays. I think he's currently um, offshore. We'll put it that way. Um, he might be in the Isle of Wight, but, you know, it's, it's abroad, isn't it? That is his nickname, Offshore Collings. Offshore Collings. Um, I mean, he may be uh, getting a call from Mr. Roman Abramovich about whether or not he can open a bank account for him in uh, his offshore ways. Yeah. Um, Ellis is now um, Papa Ellis. So we've lost him, unfortunately. Papa Ellis. Papa Ellis. Papa Mel. He's gone. Um yeah, it's it's very quiet, very lonely. Yeah. Uh, That's it. I think Carl's on next week, but other than that, uh, Nick's at work, otherwise he might have been here. But basically the rest of them, so if you are starting up a podcast, you know, like when you've got one of these, um, these like, uh, what's it called, Hollywood FC United, uh, hmm. where you've got all the, um, all the has-been actors and they want to start up a uh, football club. I mean, Vinnie Jones is in there and, and yeah. Schwarzenegger and all those other ones. So if you are starting up a podcast and you want a few old timers to get you going, you know, like on a manager, like, like when, Ars when Arteta first came into Arsenal, we've got, we got Louise, we've got Chegg, mm -hmm. we've got Willian, you know, all the ones that will give you a couple of good games a season. So if you need any, let us know. Um, send us an email at um, uh, abirdcampwonderland at gmail.com and, and we'll... Uh, We'll do you some kind of good deal on some of them. You might be able to rabble uh, them together and make a, and it, one entire podcast to hopefully. Maybe. John has got a new job, so he should be free soon. Bless him. Hopefully. Uh, and then we've got, um, yeah, Ellis as well, who hopefully at some point he'll just be like, oh, well, screw his new baby and uh, come back to podcast with us. But Or I'm... wait until the the government decide to pay NHS staff a decent wage and then he can afford not to work 30-hour days. Yeah, that's the other option. Basically, it's just Crisp in a knob. That is it. it. Uh, Crisp said he didn't want to come on now that Gwen Doozy's left, so he's left. Uh, that was what it. That? What, what's the news on that? I saw so, um, someone tweet it. So remember how in the summer we negotiated a deal with Marseille that um, Gwen Doozy would leave. Uh, he'd go there on loan and then they had to buy him uh, in the summer. Well, now they've got a transfer ban in the summer. They've gone, oh, we're going to buy Guendouzi now because he's played enough games for us. Um, so I think it's £9 million is what we negotiated because at the time he was a £9 million player. Um, <laughs> and he has either turned into um, you know, a, a £30 million player, as some people may perceive him to be, or I'd just say however much he did cost, we've turned a profit on him and he's still a dickhead. So... Um, <laughs> 
I think we're quids in. Have you that. been kicked out of the Gwendozi fan club then? I don't think I was ever really a member. Um, no. Other than Chris invited me, put me in, so he had some numbers for it to build yeah. up. And then I was like, okay, cool. Then he got rid of me as soon as I um, laughed at him with, um, <laughs> oh dear. For the people at home, Jimmy H has put, with the amount yeah. of shit Chelsea in, in, the pirate might do an emergency <laughs> podcast for them. You know you've reached rock bottom when the fucking when our, when our beautiful listeners are taking the piss out of him for not turning up. Only, only oh, when it's dear. an emergency. <laughs> I want to tell him the WhatsApp that you sent me when you said you were free about um, is Chris doing his uh, obligatory one podcast a month at the moment. But no, <laughs> I... I did ask because it was technically the first of the month, so I didn't know if he'd uh, penciled it in for the beginning of March or if it will be later in the uh, later in the month. Um, I mean, we've got to play Liverpool soon, haven't we? So I'm sure be after looking that. At, I'm just yeah. looking at the fixtures now. <laughs> when is going to be? When's when's when are we going to hit the hump? It's going to be. Oh, we've got Liverpool. It has been around. It's, it's the Spurs one, isn't it? It's the Spurs. Man United is on the Man United aren't a problem. So it's going to be either the Liverpool or the Spurs game. So mm. uh, listeners, expect him sometime around the Liverpool or Spurs game. Set your clock by it. You watch by yeah. it. <laughs> Just you wait. Like and if he's listening to this, Chris, he plays you're too one dimensional. <laughs> you're too one dimensional. <laughs> so how much of it is Gwen Doozy going for? Has that been nine given million. over? Yeah, nine million. It's what we negotiated in the summer. Yeah. Someone's, uh, um, we were just talking about this before the show. Oh, we were. Um, it wasn't that particular podcast we were talking about, but yeah, it would be some split allegiances. Um, Robbie, if you have, if you need some advice on supporting two, you know, your uh, your hometown team and then the club that you've supported from a, as a young lad, uh, both playing in the same league, well, I've got a slightly similar situation with my boyhood team are playing in the Premier League and are currently fifth with Mikel Arteta at the helm. And then the club that um, I go and watch regularly in Brighton are also in the Premier League. So, yes, I can help you out on that when you have your split allegiances. Um, but, yeah, who? Uh, what can we say? They're, it's not going well for Chelsea. The uh, Roman's no longer at the wheel. Um, and... I and don't also, know how much uh, we can say without, you know, I'll, I'll listen we to can talk as if this was championship manager. That's what we're referring to. We're all playing football mm -hmm. manager. And uh, in my game of football manager, Roman Abramovich has had to leave. Has he left to leave in your one, Josh? Um, he has definitely said he's leaving. He doesn't need to worry about the two billion pounds he's laundered through Chelsea. Um, that, that. Can, that can stay um, there. Um what else did he? Um, what else did he say? Oh, all of the um, all of the money that he makes in terms of a profit from the sale of Chelsea. Who bear in mind, Chelsea have no assets. They do not own Stamford Bridge. I don't think they own the training ground either. They're both owned by the fans. So the only thing he's got to sell is Timo Werner and uh, the other lot of them. Uh, it's only the players. Um, that he owns so I'm, i don't imagine he'll get too much but anyway the profit he'll make from that sale um will go towards the victims of the um the uh, current ukraine russia war which if i believe my understanding rightly the victims of that war are russians because i don't think they're winning <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how accurate Champ football manager is nowadays because mine has gone down the exact same route as mm -hmm. that as well. And ex Norwich manager um, Daniel Farka has Farkad off from Russia. He's left his team Krasnodar because of uh, in my game things are all going a little bit wonky. Um, but we're not talking about the political side of anything that's mm -hmm. going on there because that's far too serious and basically bollocks for us to uh, to, to, to us to talk about. But what is going to be the future of Chelsea? What where's First of all, the only thing I've heard is Radio Five were saying that um, the LA nope, the baseball team that play in white. I can't remember the name of the team. Not I'm Yankees. thinking the Rams. Huh? Yankees. I don't know. No, it was a, a base. Someone who owns a baseball team. Someone in the chat will will know what it is. Um, said that they, the people who own that, might come and buy Chelsea, and they uh, they will turn it into a sustainable franchise model like they have done with their baseball team <laughs> they they've got um they've got is it the swiss guy 
who might be buying them. I imagine um, the gentleman who owns Ineos, Jim Ratcliffe, um, bona fide um, Brexiteer who doesn't live in England um, or the UK, one of those you ones. Know, I watch a lot of IRL of people in Southeast Asia, and Ineos is one of the biggest fuel suppliers of petrol, like Shell. They're everywhere. And he also bought Team Sky, the um, the cycling team, and toured to call those Ineos, and then Ineos yep. uh, that did shit all, because uh, all the best cyclists have buggered off. Uh, uh, Thomas won under Ineos. Oh, we go. It is under Ineos. LA Dodgers. That's. Oh, I think that. <laughs> I don't know. So sorry, we're going from the tax Dodgers to the LA Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, same thing. So, uh, oh yeah, LA Dodgers. Um, Paul says, uh, New York Wankies. No. So if they, so I think what people who would what would they would like to happen with Chelsea? I know it's an Arsenal podcast, but this we've got very little to talk about because our club's doing all right. Let's let's um, let's uh, dwell on the the sad fortunes of other teams, and mm. I think what people Arsenal other football fans would like is someone to come in, sell all of Chelsea stuff, and they're going to go back to where they belong, being a Championship star. That's never going to happen, is it? Because that is an ongoing business with a hell of a lot of players worth a hell of a lot of money. They might someone might come in and then asset strip some of the players. They were saying Radio Five said that if they um one of those um companies that come in and do that, what, what's that type of company called? Uh, an administrators. No. Um, some kind of financial group that will buy a company and strip it oh, down, like, like a hedge in fund. Wall Street. Huh? You have like a hedge, hedge fund. Hedge yeah, fund they said if a hedge fund it. comes in, they may well strip it down, sell all the good stuff, and then sell it on again because they've got so many players there that are worth so much money. Um, mm. Realistically, what do you think is going to happen? Um, I think realistically, someone will come in. Um, they will sell, uh, but I don't think they'll get the money that um that roman is asking for we'll put it that way uh, do we know how much he's asking for well this report is apparently for three million uh which no, three billion sorry and three billion would cover his debt so um but he doesn't want the debt covered though does he allegedly? he doesn't want the debt yeah he's written off the debt because who knows why he doesn't want the two billion um back who knows what uh is going on there uh, but as Loki said, uh, if Mike Ashley, he goes in there, you're going to have Sports Direct up on there. Timo Werner, you know, buy a Havertz, get a Timo Werner free. We'll be up there um, every day of the week. And there is definitely, you could strip them, take all the money out, and then just say, see you later. I think the Glazers might do that. They're quite good at being um, bad owners. I know the only other person that appears regularly on this pod other than you, Mike, um, who I have dubbed the Swiss Roll Ramble. Um, <laughs> uh, he, you put that in, in a show once, and I nearly went myself. <laughs> when he was uh, busy talking about his spreadsheet. So, yeah, the Swiss Roll Ramble. Um, he's been compiling a list of who are the best and worst owners. And I'm sure, uh, yeah, I think the Glazers came up um, top of that. Um, Jimmy H32 has asked about what if Daniel Eck might come and say he's a long term life support. You know, a lifelong fan of uh, Chelsea. Um, I've made a note of that Swiss fans. roll ramble. I'm going to get hold of ramble. Sebi and see if he can put uh, <laughs> a picture of Mike's face on a Swiss roll. <laughs> uh, what did you say yeah. while I was talking over you? It, was, it was Daniel Eck, that exact point there. So, yeah, I did like... Um, have you seen who Daniel Eck decided to align Spotify with after we said, oh, we're not buying him? He went to his other lifelong fan favorite team in Barcelona and he was giving them a fuck ton of money instead um, and it, it, there's a sponsorship deal with them so yeah so he never had enough money to buy the club anyway and he was never going to no, buy the club I don't think he was um, yeah should we answer Ross's question as well Ross Morgan so ask the question what does a Chelsea sale mean for the rest of the league can you see another foreign power taking them over um, I mean yeah, I think Jim Radcliffe would probably come back in for them. Uh, by he? Foreign power. he is the owner of Ineos. Um, oh, he just said that. I forgot his name. Yeah. Yeah. I um, really think he'd want to buy a, a club with costing that much. Because if he wanted a Premier League club, I mean, first of all, the, the people who just bought Newcastle are probably busy going through their receipts drawer trying, trying to get their money he, back um, and buying he, a medley made club. But if he, he wanted to buy for Newcastle, he tried to buy Chelsea before. So. 
I, that's why I think because he tried to go and get them a couple of years ago, and Roman said he wasn't selling because, um, well, Boris was still allowing him to operate in London, um, which I think he is at the moment, but will slowly move away. But yes, yeah, Guns and Yellow Ribbons has said he's the second richest man in Britain, um, or the sorry, I should say he is the second richest man who is British um, because he doesn't mm. live in England. Um, he does. He hasn't for years. It's the same as um, old Joe Bananas at um, Spurs, the Spurs owner. <laughs> Joe Bananas. Yeah, Joe oh, Lewis. How, how did you get the name Joe Bananas? Joe Bananas. I'm sure that's what Steve used to call him. I'm not sure there's uh, other reasons why he's called Joe you Bananas, know, that, but yeah, that is an excuse. If we say anything that we're not sure whether it's it's allowed, because Steve used to say it, and everyone goes, "Fair enough." Yep, that's our new thing now. Because uh, <laughs> at least we're going to have to try and bring back some other uh, ABWs. We, we've, uh, we're going to have Derek Acora on soon, and that's going to be the easiest way for us to book guests. Yeah, <laughs> the other side, we'll, we'll get, get Elvis on as well. <laughs> yeah, and Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen. We'll get all of them. Get them all and of Terry them. Wogan, to be sure. To be sure. To be sure. Still um, have Terry Wogan. I was yeah, we'll get him to host. Him. He, he could do, and we could uh, have a song section. We we'll do Janet and John for a bit there. There's no way that um, the league would go, right, obviously everything Bramish has ever done has been hooky, taking all your <laughs> league titles off you. That would be funny, but I don't imagine that that will happen. And I don't think we ever finish second, so we'd never get any I'm, retrospective awards. Yeah, I don't think we'd ever get anything. It would probably go to someone like, oh, go to Liverpool. I think Liverpool would get one. That would be even worse. Actually, I think that would be funnier is if... Um, if Liverpool got yet more Premier League trophies that their fans didn't witness. Oh, no, we can't do it. 16-17 Spurs were runners-up. Oh, no. 14-15 Man City. Uh, Man United in 9-10. Man United in 5-6. Oh, we'd have got one. 4-5. Oh, yeah. oh, of course. Four, but five. it's not worth it. No, we can't do that because no. we don't want Spurs to even... Do we get our... If um, they void all their results, does that mean we yeah. get the... Um... Do we get the um, the o three o four Champions League? Do we get that? And then we could stop oh, Jose yeah, Mourinho because... existing because they knocked yeah. us out, and we would have got the run to the final and played Porto. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> For my Claude is breaking. War crimes <laughs> FC to be told. Sold to mysterious bin- billionaire named Abraham Romanovich for three pound <laughs> fifty. <laughs> Be very clear, people. We are not laughing at the war situation because that is incredibly no. fucking serious and incredibly shit. We're laughing mm-hmm. at Chelsea. I'm going to make that very clear we because a friend of the Chelsea. pod has family that are involved in in that stuff. And mm-hmm. if you see him on Twitter, John, um, yeah, he wouldn't like us if he thought we were laughing at not at the situation. We're not. We're laughing at Chelsea, and we're going to no. laugh at Everton in a minute. So that's we why will. That's but um, that would also be the. Um... It would only be the second lowest figure that Chelsea have ever been sold for as well at £3.50. Ken Bates yeah, be, a pound. Yeah, Ken Bates sold them for a quid. Um, that would be that would be nice little round circle, or you know, full circle, as if uh, if someone bought Chelsea for a quid. Uh, Mr Waffles, David, uh, has mm-hmm. been on many times, says, why does he have to sell? Is the UK freezing Russian nationalist assets? Not yet. They're giving them time. They're giving them yeah. a countdown. <laughs> What Boris has said is, uh, right, all the ones that don't have business in London properly, yeah, get out. Um, we're putting sanctions on you. But also, Mr. Abramovich, can you um, – you've got you've got 30 days to sell Chelsea, yeah. basically, um, so long as you give me a brown envelope. Um, and, yeah. Uh, a nice donation to the Conservative nice, Party. Yeah, You'll leave with a peerage. <laughs> exactly. Um, and what was the other one that I saw in the chat box? That was well, someone there? I noticed that somebody said in the in the news that you can tell something was going wrong because Abramovich started moving all of it. Um, all the mushroom billionaires yeah. started moving their yachts away from the UK. Mm. I don't know if they keep yeah. it in the UK. They probably do. Probably keep it in Southampton. Um, someone was saying about um, Abramovich's passport. He's got Israeli citizenship and he's got Portuguese citizenship as well. So he can operate in the EU. But good old Brexit. There's one good thing. He can't operate, but um, he's also been banned. He's been sanctioned in the EU, so he can't operate there. Mm. So, yeah. That's a good question um, there from Archie. Doesn't the new owner, not that's hella funny. Do you know what, what that's about? Uh, the new owner, yeah, so the owner wouldn't own the pitch. 
uh, and he wouldn't own the name Chelsea. You know why? Either. Yes, because it's owned by the fans. Yeah, that's so he uh, wanted that's to move Stamford really... Bridge. Yeah. So that's why they haven't. You thought all this money that they've got, they could afford to buy the entire area and knock it down. That's what his plan was. But wasn't it one square foot patch, patches of the pitch? Try saying that with a pickled mm. pepper. And uh, the, then it's, it's such legally binding contract that you'd have to get every single fan to agree to sell their patch of lamb of the pitch or, the, or whatever it was. Uh, was it just the pitch? I think it would just be the pitch. But. I and think it's the pitch were there. They can't move it because uh, he wanted to use Bastia Power Station. They were going to pay that, yeah. pay there instead. That was the plan. They were going to convert that, that put a tube station oh, underneath God. it. Uh, yeah, he couldn't do it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. <sighs> It is, um, it it is, is hilarious is. to see. I, I'm it glad is. to see that there's lots of you, like Mr. Bob Lex has already logged in via Twitch. Mm. We have, uh, well, it says we've got no people watching on Twitch because uh, this is nonsense. We've got eight people watching on Twitch. We've got Michael, as always. We've got Mr. Bob Lex, who's a fresh VIP. Um, mm. Michael's always been a VIP. So if you can, go and log into your Twitch as well because we're, we're, we're doing a Eddie and Ketia in the League Cup. We like to stat pad this shit. Yeah. What are you going to say? Uh, I was going to say also, uh, Mr. Bob Lex joined our Discord server as well this week. Um, oh. Yeah, you can see how quiet that is in there. Um, and yeah, I was like, oh, I forgot we've got Discord. So yeah, uh, don't worry. It's not, uh, you don't have to pay to our Patreon or any of that bollocks. And we never you do that. Just, no, you can just go in there and you can talk shit to people. And yeah. maybe someone from ABW might reply, but um, there's only two of us now um so you get lucky <laughs> i haven't even got um discord on my i've got a bar across the top with all my shortcuts on i'm so cool yeah. they don't even have names it's just the icons i haven't even got it on there hello guys arsenal new zealand are you the arsenal new zealand podcast or are you just generally in new zealand what a wonderful i've got a friend who's um he's him and his family are all um rhodesian and oh. chris moved to peterborough and his brother moved to um one of the brothers stayed there and the other one went to New Zealand and he said he just gets up in the morning and then he goes outside and if, when it's not raining, he just he just sits there and watches the world. And he said, it's so quiet. It's amazing. That's the future. That's because they haven't let anyone in for so long because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no one there. Uh, uh, Fergus, so Fergus says, Twitch, is that what Harry Redknapp started? I think you could, could be true there. So the gist of the... Um, Oh look, they're all. Uh, they're all. Oh look, someone's found. What's uh, Mr. Boblex has found? Uh, I don't know what that is. What is I that? I don't know. It is either. It's an emoji of some description. Yeah, um, it is. We've got ones that I made, the Burkamp one. But if you uh, if you are on Twitch, and you want to subscribe. Please don't don't use your actual money. Never use your money on Twitch. Only ever use it if you've got Amazon Prime. You can connect your Amazon Prime to your Twitch because Amazon own Twitch, and then you just subscribe with your free. Prime subscription. That's the only way. Do not give us any actual money. Oh, he says he is actually from the. Uh, oh, oh, it moved. Oh, you can. This, oh, and then we clicked it again. <laughs> oh, we both got control. Come before you go. You go. Oh, no, no, no. you go. No, oh, no, I, you. I <laughs> yes, there I am for the podcast. David is one of the guys who invented it. Oh, and I've been on that. Interviewed you. He interviewed you. Invented it. Interviewed. Same thing. Interviewed. Yeah, but I'm sure that he did. He did Write the both. theme tune. Sung the theme tune and interviewed you. That's from it. Land down under. Um. So the gist uh, with Chelsea is, I reckon nothing much is going to change, is it? Um, I think it might level the playing field a little bit, but um, in, in future buying it might do because they're no longer yeah. going to go and spend a hundred million pound on the bloke who doesn't really want to be there. Yeah, uh, I don't think they'll really do anything more than that. Um, but I think they're definitely a team that we can look at uh, in terms of overtaking. We're already looking a little bit. At, can we get? above them um across them but yeah i don't necessarily see them being as potent as they once were uh, and maybe we start to move back towards the um you know the kind of two team premier league whilst we're kind of getting back up um but yeah who knows on that one should we go and laugh at the other team and um can i be really smug i'm surprised i didn't actually wear any rams mem um like memorabilia or anything for this part of the show Why? um because i think we're going to talk about the uh i told you so with the situation at everton where they've mr. lost Belarusian. mr mr usmanov uh is he is he from Belarusia? no but, but... from uzbekistan isn't he 
I thought. Or is he Albanian? No. no, he's not Albanian. He's definitely one no. of the um, one of those satellites. I think, he's from Uz- I think he's from Uzbekistan. But yeah, he is. Um, he was one of those that has been already told by Boris that uh, your money is no longer welcome in the Conservative Party. Uh, I mean, sorry, in uh, in England. Yeah, slip of the tongue the there. Yeah, slip of the tongue there. Sorry. Um, yeah, so he's not allowed to do anything and that's some there was some shady dodgy things that he'd started well that's why he sold all of his shares in arsenal in the first place didn't he yeah he did uh and then you saw exactly what he did um and you could see why um the cronkies didn't necessarily want to fatten up the pig that was arsenal for (laughs) uh for him to steam in and you know do some of the interesting um financial situations or financial dealings that they've got set up so i think one of the things that is he sponsors the training grounds um his company yes yeah, sponsors the training ground and is it mashiri owns is the chairman of that company and mashiri owns everton and that's all a bit shady um what else oh he's also got the naming rights for a stadium that doesn't exist Ah, oh, the uh, well, King's Dock one. Yeah, he's got the naming rights. £30 million pounds is paid for that. Wow. And uh, hopefully they've cashed that check. Mm. Because yeah. that's, that's, I mean, how this is going to affect Everton more. Because we've already seen this in the last, mm. uh, since he um, bought shares, the pair of them went to uh, Usmanov and um, Mashiri. Was it Mashiri, did you say? Yeah, Mashiri. Yeah, since they've gone there, they've spent best part of £250 million. Pounds, or was it £500 million? Including oh, the amount, I think it's two fifty on weight on players, but five hundred when it include all the all the other stuff they spent. Yeah. And Everton have done absolutely nothing with all of that. And now they're they've got a, a stadium they're committed to in the mm-hmm. docks at Everton. There's an interesting documentaries. The amount of water they've had to ship out, and the amount of sand they've had to put in there, and it's going to be a really nice stadium. And now basically their owners are going, "Oh, um, we're, my mum's called me for dinner. I'll see you later. Got to go." <laughs> And then Everton are going to be going, oh dear, that could affect them. Plus, it looks like they could go down with the um, depending on how some of the results go. Because Watford are on a, a bit of a run, Burnley are definitely on a bit of a run. Mm. Yeah, and I mean they've probably hired the worst manager to try and get you out of uh, that situation. Uh, you would have got someone that would have been. For me, I would have either stuck with Rafa. I know Rafa was not necessarily, you know, he was public enemy number one on uh, in that part of the country. But also, he would have got you out of that situation. Fat Frank? Mm, no, not for me. Not for me. Wayne Rooney did a be- is doing a better job at Derby than Fat Frank ever did. He just cried about the fact that Bielsa looked over his uh, fence one day. That's all that Lampard really did. Oh, and take a load of um, youth players from Chelsea who were well into Premier League quality uh, and basically only managed to get to the playoffs with Mason Mount, Tamori, and who else did he have from Chelsea? He had someone else as well. I can't remember who else he had in there. But yeah, he had a bit of a a ringer team. Um, so who knows? Who knows yeah. what they would have been the... The man is a bit of an expert on the championship, and uh, they did a lot of that. And like Nick has put here, they paid forty million for Delhi Ali, or they will do. Delhi Ali is the English Mesut Ozil. So he's, <laughs> he's, he's all um, haircuts and attitude and tricks and flicks. But when it comes down to it, is is what his years. I mean, that season when he played for Spurs and he got seven, I think seventeen in all competitions. Yeah, you're never getting that out of him ever again. No, no, I don't think so. He had that kind of season, and it was out. Um, yeah, are we going to go for Mr. Bob Lex's question? I'll let you well? press the button, Josh. Oh, I can press the button. Question from Mr. Bob Lex from Twitch as well. Remember, <sighs> you can go into Twitch and you can oh, Twitch us. Um, if Chelsea have a fire sale, which players are you going to you gonna take, Danny? He he wants Kante and he wants Brozier as well. I, um, my favourite player there is Reese James. Oh. Absolutely astounding. If you can keep him fit... He would uh, he would be England's number one right back for a decade. He is fantastic getting forward. Mm. Other than that, excellent backup for Tommy Asu as well. Mm. well I think he's probably a little bit better than Tommy Asu. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, 
Um, Kante, I wouldn't take Kante now. He is um, PSG bound, I think, anyway, if he was going to go there. Um, who else? Who else would you kind of want? Brozier is probably the player I'd look at. Um, who? If we can... Brozier is the guy at Southampton. It's on loan there. Striker. He is Albanian. I know that. Um, would you have Avon... any of their forward line? Lukaku's a no. Pulisic, no. he's not really a goal scorer in the Premier League. Pulisic yeah. has got an injury record akin to the love child of DRB and Ramsey. Oh, Jesus. Um, adopted by Sonogo. Yeah. Timo Werner, he's, he's pretty good. But so, so many of these aren't out and out strikers. They're so kind we'll take of. Werner. Werner's, no. he's just shown he can't do it in this league. Um, Havertz is an interesting one. Um, yeah, he's he's an interesting one to have a look Still at. Young. He Still him, young, seventy odd million. Yeah, he did cost him a good amount of money, but he is he's still in his early twenties. Um, but all of these players, they yeah. were massive goal scorers in the leagues they come from, and then they come to play for Chelsea, an attacking team, and they they struggle to get anywhere near the kind of ratio they got before. Mm. And as a rule, I mean, Werner and Pulisic were both banging in goals in Germany. Yep, I don't know where Zayic come from. Uh, ZH came from Ajax. Ah, uh, yes. He was a very good player when I saw him down at the Amex. He was probably their best player. Um, Kante didn't look great when I saw him, but then I don't really like Kante, so probably he doesn't help. Um, we talk about Jorginho, who we were linked with before. Um, what I have noticed, though, is when we sign a player from Chelsea, they tend to be shit. So, um, <laughs> so no. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good they are for Chelsea, they'll be shit for us. Um, and even if we buy the shit players from Chelsea, they're even shitter. It doesn't kind of, there's no you know, kind of reverse psychology we can do with that. Um, Who's Cho? Callum Hudson Adoy um, mm. would not touch yes. him with a barge pole because he right. is on absurd wages. Um, Dirty boy. Yeah, he was the reason why every youth player now wants over um, 100. Uh, grand a week is because he's on 120k a week because Chelsea was suddenly scared that all their youth players were leaving. So that's going to be a problem. Some of those young players that they've got, whoever comes in is going to go, no, 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 senor, you lot, are, we're going to get rid of you because we can't, we haven't got a bottomless pit of a dirty money that we can just um, keep writing you gyros in someone else's name. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to be accountable for the wages. And uh, even to this day, Chelsea are not a self-sustaining model, which is something Arsenal have been for a very long time, where I think it's been said pre-COVID that Arsenal could survive on uh, gate receipts and match day income mm. alone. I mean, now you look at the fact that we've cut our wage bill by over a million pound, 1.2 million pound a week, mm. including players that have gone out on loan, but who... That's if they were paying their full wage. Like we know for a fact, Udinese are not paying all the 80 grand a week for, um, and this is Pablo Mari. Is that his name? Yeah. Bloody he's hell. I don't know players. why I thought that was wrong. Yeah. Cause he's on an absolute fortune and he'll be gone mm. soon, but there's no way they're paying 80. They're not even paying half his wages, but, no. but saving that amount of money, we are the, we are the shining light of a self-sustaining model for mm. a top six side. And even yeah. Spurs have seen lately that they're they're on their arse and constantly. <laughs> and Chelsea are winning, thank God, because we want Chelsea to win. We want all of our teams above us to be in all the competitions possible, which is so far looking pretty good because mm -hmm. they are. I want all of them to be in the competitions until the final, where I want them to yeah. not make to the, the final. Or get banned. Or get banned. For yeah, because uh, other things that have happened, the uh, all Russian teams have been kicked out of mm -hmm. the all European mm -hmm. football. All national football, they've all been there. Um, everyone said we're not playing you. Mm. Mazapan is, is going to be banned from Formula One. Um, the UK has banned all Russian drivers from all levels of motorsport in this country. Russia have been kicked out of the European Song Contest, which is which is going to be harsh on them. That's big. That is big. That's, that's huge. I mean, that's, that, that'll, that'll break most people alone. Yeah. I think that's the key one. That's why they're trying to look at pulling out now is purely because they've been banned from the Eurovision Song Contest. They, you know, there is a lot of Euro trash and Euro pop that it's just that is the final final straw for them. Someone's um, going to break that to Zeke Zeke Sputnik, the uh, the eighties shit band. Uh, I heard they're going to make a comeback. <laughs> what other stuff they've been banned from? Because you're hearing it every day that so many people are banning them from everything. 
Um, Radio Five was listing them all today, and I thought, bloody hell, that's um, you're basically I've not really fucked. seen many of them. Um, oh, UEFA started, or sorry, FIFA started saying that Russia could still play as Russia, but they wouldn't be called Russia; they'd be the um, Judean People's Front or the um, <laughs> <laughs> People's Front of Judea is one of the two that they would play under the banner of that with a slightly different flag and slightly like they're doing the Olympics. Yeah, which they still cheat at, and they're still allowed in. Fucking yeah. ridiculous. Um, should we talk a little bit Arsenal? We've we've, we've had we uh, we've had thirty five minutes of laughing at did the, we, the poor fortunes. Did we want to talk slightly? Um, we can talk about misfortunes below us as well. I think because um, about the and it's, Ars- and it's Arsenal related as well. The Balogun last night knocking Spurs out of the uh, FA Cup. Oh, go on then. You twist me on. Did you watch the game? I didn't watch the game. No, I watched it. It was um, it was hilarious. Balogun came on, I think, um, with about half an hour, forty five, about forty minutes to go. Mm-hmm. Um, number forty seven, I think he plays. Had a really good chance at one point. The ball came from the right. A lovely bit of play. One of their players zigzagged in through the Spurs defence, and then he had a gave it to him, and he had a shot on the edge of the box, and it went went over. But um, he didn't look bothered. Carried on going. Um, Harry Kane took a free kick. And as he took the free kick, he fell over, slipped on his arse, and that was terrible. Then uh, the ball came in for Spurs from the right-hand side, um, kerfuffle in the area, and he spanked it home like he did. And then they all celebrated, and there was tears and crayons and snot, and then they disallowed it. And then they went, oh, for fuck's sake. You should see every time. Every, what I love about it is every time they're playing and every time anything goes wrong, guess where the camera goes straight to? To look at his, his, his weird-looking, not Harry Kane, is it is it the um the one that um we can describe or Steve used to describe in a very affectionate way due to his eating habits or potential eating habits? Is it that one? Does he go to uh, him or does he go to the um does he go to Conte? Conte. Conte. Okay. Goes to Conte. <laughs> and every time it's like they seem I swear they have a camera on him the entire time just for the, the look on his face when something doesn't go right. And oh. then uh He'd be tearing his yeah. hair out if it didn't cost so much. He's it, got a lovely barnet on him. It does. Just, uh, looking into getting one myself. Yeah, but the the, the goal for those was, uh, I can't remember who scored it, but it's a pretty decent goal. And then the rest of the game, they just kept attacking. Atta- all the time they were attacking and Son did nothing and Harry Kane did nothing. And Spurs just looked completely lost. And at the end of the game, everyone's all celebrating and screaming and jumping up and down like you would do. Mm-hmm. So it's a shame they got knocked out because... Uh, then I thought they're not really a rival to us, are they? Because they're not pushing for top six because they've had their little run. And now I think they've lost uh, four out of their last six games, mm-hmm. which is a, a world record for Conte. He's never had that kind of bad luck. And do you think he'll make it to the end of the season? Or do you think he'll go, fuck this, I'm oh, going? Um, he will stay until the end of the season. I expect him to do that unless Daniel Levy decides to try and fire him. But I don't think they've got the money to do it. Um, They're already paying six other managers. That's the other thing, Michael. Put yeah. EA reportedly moved all Russian stuff from FIFA 22. That they moved Russia one. from FIFA 22. Wow. EA being the good guys. Who would have Impossible. thought that? Yeah, Don't but really you'd probably be able to pay for some DLC to get them back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah, Conte will wait to the summer um, and then he'll go. Um, are we playing tomorrow? I don't think we play tomorrow. This shows how little I know. Um, we are playing on the 6th, which is uh, not tomorrow. No, Sunday. Six. We play Watford on Sunday. We should probably yeah. start that. Yeah. Um, and then we're playing again the Sunday after that. Mm-hmm. Again, it's uh, Leicester. Yeah, we don't play midweek, I don't think. It's confusing no. me because I've got a midweek fixture next week because um, there's a load of rescheduled. So Spurs play on Wednesday and so do Liverpool. Liverpool come down to Brighton. Oh, you're going to be at that? Wednesday. I will be. Um, mm. I will try and shout my best horse-related um, insults at Jurgen Klopp. Um, yeah, I'm kind of looking looking forward to that one. But yeah, Julian, go look at another calendar. You're, uh, the one you're using is broken. Um but yeah, should we talk about that game as well? Yes. Uh, so we are, um, yes, we've got Watford, haven't we? So I think it's going to be an interesting game, Watford. Uh, they've got, did we, who was the manager we last played? 
against at Watford? Every time we've played them, an actual statistical mm. fact, every time we've played them for the last four years, they've had a different manager, probably, possibly. Possibly. Did we play him under Ranieri or was it still... Um... Oh, God, I can't even remember his name. I wouldn't say um, Flyovich, but it's not him. It's not Flyovich. Um... I'm looking, the last time we played them, their manager was Ranieri. Was Ranieri. We beat them 1-0. And it was a goal from Smith Rowe in the 56th minute. I remember yeah. that game. It was quite tough. They had a bloke sent off right near the end. A bummer mm-hmm. young. Uh, what was this? He had a goal ruled out. Or was it a penalty? I don't know. It's a ball with a cross through it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Goal disallowed. Ah. Uh, I remember that game. We were very frustrated. Oh, no, he missed a penalty. He missed a penalty because Ben Foster saved it. Um, oh, no. If he was in goal, then I've got the right game. Uh, yeah. It was. So I think... Um, I'm slightly more like I would have been more fearful if we were playing Ranieri's team again because they'll actually attack. So they were capable do of, a, of, of a shock. They were capable of a shock. Uh, now they've got Hodgson. You know what he's going to do? He's going to get you a forty percent um, or sixty percent loss rate. He'll sort you something out. Um, and yeah, we just need to be able to break them down, which I think is what we've kind of seen in the last couple of games. It's similar to the Wolves um, double header that we had. And there's a game we'll need to talk about as well. Um, mm, magnificent yeah. results. Absolutely uh, magnificent game. Uh, do you think we celebrated in the right way? Do you think Ruben Neves would be happy with the way we celebrated like we'd won the uh, like we won the league? I think Ramsdale was uh, it was like a it was like a homing pigeon <laughs> uh, looking for him, it's going to go and celebrate in front of him. He was he was doing the dance of uh, you've already made one reference to Monty Python when he cured the leper. When you cured him, that little dance that he did, <laughs> um, Michael Palin, God bless him, uh, he did that. But it was fantastic when you look at the fact that Wolves are well now they've lost three and four, but the way they play football, they're very hard to break down and very hard to beat. And I was going to um, I asked you before if you want to talk a little bit about the. The, the, the tactics that Mikel did when we were losing 1 0 and the way that he went with two up front, because the Tuesday club talked about it a little bit. And then mm. I think they had Alan realised, hold on, there's no point talking tactics with these two because they're both fucking idiots. But <laughs> yeah, what did you make to the tactics? And because uh, he also did some other good tactics against Liverpool, didn't he, when we were down to 10 men? Yeah, I mean, we all applauded um, Big Bob Holding coming on because I think he had a superb game against Liverpool. Um, I think the one that we're looking at was um yeah there was a couple of good things we saw you could see the difference that uh gabriel made a mistake i think he wasn't necessarily great in the rest of the game but you could see that ramsdale kind of galvanized that team that's been well um well documented and well highlighted that ramsdale kind of you know turned the team around i think that's what kind of started the um ramsdale should be our new captain movement that um got a little bit surprising um, got more uh, traction than I expected. But yeah, the substitutions, we saw yet more clever substitutions from um, from Arteta. Eddie coming on, I know we don't necessarily like seeing players play who are going to leave in the summer um, or at least are rumoured to be leaving. So, But when Eddie's come on, he's already shown a good bit of work rate and, you know, he always has that opportunity to go behind, push forward. Um, and then Pepe was the guy that I think I'd spoken about, probably not last time I was on the pod, but the pod before, that he is the big, um, he's the player that I expect to be doing the things that we'd have expected are, um, you know, the striker we didn't get in January. Um because if you really thought about it, how many goals did you expect, say, Isak, if he came in, uh, how many goals would you expect him to get without a pre-season with us, coming in cold to this team, into cold into the league? Would you think in maybe 16, 18 games, however many we had left at that point? Four or five, possibly. Would you get you maybe seven goals if he hit the ground running? Maybe 10? No. Pep- well, Isaac, he can't even score yeah. for Sociedad at the moment. Uh, yeah, but that's because he's not got his best mate, Martin Odegaard, with him. But uh, 10, I think 20 goals then. 10, 20 goals, but yeah. Uh, I think it's the thing that we saw from Pepe last season, that after January, he got us seven goals and two assists in the remaining games. And he's already come on and he got a goal and an assist 
what uh, a few moments well not moments but hours after um after his partner gave birth um as you know that was the um it was the first goal he scored for us in the league this season which showed that he hadn't scored in the league for the duration of his partner's pregnancy Ellis since, pepe last, yeah, since pepe last scored he hadn't scored if you know what i mean Aye, aye. Um, oi, one oi. for the dads. Yeah, one for, one for the uh, one for the old man out there. Um, but yeah, I think there's um, it was some very clever tactics there, and I I think uh, we're getting back to you know the Wenger way of doing it. That if in doubt, more diminutive playmakers, and I think we saw that again. That we knew Wolves weren't really going to attack us, so we could get away with going to three at the back and just sticking. Um, not really wing backs at wing back, so I think it was Pepe on one side and who was on the other side? Was it Saka? Was it Smith Rowe? I can't really remember with our substitution. Well, when the game Saka. started, no, when Pepe came on, I think uh, Saka, I think Saka went was... over to the left because we had Nuno came on, but he was kind of playing left. Never back. sure, never sure yeah. where Nuno plays. I, yeah, think, I think he just plays referee right. once and plays quickly. He is. He's, uh, I said before, he reminds me of a young Gail Clichy. Um, he's not necessarily the best defender, but he's a good dribbler and he's got a bit of vibes about him. Um, and he'll go far with us, I think. Um, but yeah, I think I was, I was interested to see what Arteta did and obviously worked out really well for us. And all credit to Nicolas Pepe. I think he, he's doing the job that we kind of need from him. Um, that's exactly what I kind of expected from him, that he would be that player whilst we couldn't get the signing we want. He'd paper over that crack for us. And uh, so far, so good. As I say, a goal and assist. Uh, Eddie got an assist there. Odegaard again looked great in our midfield. Um, I Odegaard think, was magnificent, yeah. pulling the strings. I mean, there was one point, I think, in the in the first half where he was running into the box and then saw maybe Lacazette running ahead of him. He lifted the ball with his foot over the defender into the path of Lacazette, but I think it hit Lacazette or it, it didn't didn't go right. But you just yeah. think that's the kind of skill that that bloke has. I mean, you can see why he's been the captain of uh, Norway for for the last year or so and why Real Madrid wanted him and why he's such a great mm. prospect. And then someone put some screen grabs of um, a Real Madrid forum where they were saying, I can't blow, believe we sold this bloke for 35 million. Now he's Arsenal's best player. We should have kept yep. him, but that's just typical Real Madrid, isn't it? If you don't go there, I mean, James Rodriguez has, has shown, <laughs> if you don't go there and shine immediately, mm. then um, they, they, you're out the door because they don't have patience. They What don't they trust, Josh? Well, they don't trust anything that isn't Spanish. I'll put it that way. That's why Isco's still there. <coughs> yeah, don't trust the later. process. It was the correct don't answer. Don't trust the process. Sorry. Well, you should know. You, you went over Spain recently, didn't you? Did you look out the window at them? I didn't go over to Spain. Over. Oh, over? Went over it. No. No, no? I didn't go over Spain. Just, to went, down, just went down and right. Yeah, we went over um, Germany. Uh, not Germany. Oh. Sorry, we go very wrong way. Went over the Channel Islands, went over France, and then went all the way down because oh. you have to go up to get to Lisbon because of the way the runway faces. The runway that's runs an, south to north. So you go down and then come through the bay. Yeah. Did you see my people as you went over Guernsey and Jersey? Did you little wave at them? I my did wave at them. There? Yep, all four of them. So hello. Hello to the GFPs. Um, yeah. And what else did I, did I do over there? We went over Porto. Saw Porto. Did you see any games when you were there? Or weren't you allowed? Um, no, I didn't see any games, but I timed it right. Uh, I think Sporting played whilst I was over there, mm. but I got the weeks right that um, there were no uh, Man, United, uh, Man City fans over there because they played the week before. Um, and that's so, why the hotel price is a, nice a lot cheaper. I, I am nice. a fan of Portugal. I do like it. Is it it's warm? Nice. Uh, it was 20 degrees, but I was the only fucker in shorts. We'll put it that way because it was <laughs> windy as hell. So you could tell who the Brit was abroad because he was the only <laughs> one in shorts. Um, Noiza says yeah. that um, Real did want to buy Odegaard back. He wouldn't be stupid enough to go there, would he? Now that he, he can see there's a direction at Arsenal and that he's been allowed to go there and play his game and everything mm. is at his tempo. And he's just going to be yeah. magnificent. Is he 23 at the moment? Until he's 24? Yeah, he's That's 23 until he's 24. Um, he's 23 until he's 30, put it that way. Ooh, um, good. 
it's a new one. Um, yeah, I I don't think we'd be getting him for. I don't think we'd be selling him for sixty five million. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I I don't. I think let's put it this way. I don't care about what Real Madrid weird did. We got ourselves an absolute bargain um, there. I know we give a lot of shit to um, what maybe Edu. Edu has done in terms of transfer dealings, but that was an absolute steal that we got Martin Odegaard for. 70 um, million they wanted from him at the beginning of the, yeah. trans- the, um, so the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were like, ah, 35, because he already wants to come to us. So um, mm. you'll take that and you'll be happy. Um, I would say there's currently a debate of whether or not uh, in the chat box between Stefan, um, captain of ABW clubs, and uh, Nick on whether or not I would survive playing Fight Simulator rather than Flight Simulator. Um, School my era there. I know. Um, Stefan thinks I wouldn't last long in Fight Simulator. Um, Nick thinks I would. I don't know if anybody in the chat box wants to say whether or not they think um, I would. I would say Stefan's got a bit of inside knowledge. I've actually met Stefan IRL. Um, so IRL? In the I real life. Know. But you said, if you if you heard Steph speak and then you met him, you, he has he has a voice that you would expect Carl to have, and then when you meet him, he's paler than you. Oh no, he's not that pale, isn't he? He's not that pale. No, have you met Stefan? No, I've uh, we've had many a, a Skype chit chat. He's been Skype bored. Yeah. yeah, or no, or or WhatsApp rings me up when he's bored. I don't blame him. Uh, Conversational, we'll put it that way. But yeah, um, it's not need to be nice. I'm not used to it. Sorry, uh, I did have an excellent uh, introduction for you, but um, my partner said I can't use it because I'll get cancelled. <laughs> so, uh, have you listened to the oh, show well. that I did, did with Tom where I was giving away inside information about ABW and uh, why Tom left and stuff? No, he blocked me. He got a few mentions. He blocked nice. me. Oh, oh well. Yeah, we he talked about that. He said he's going to unblock you. Is he? Yeah, I think he why? said he will do. Oh, well. Okay, fine. I think okay. I said that I think Josh knew that he was annoying you, and uh, he says, "Yeah, I know he was. That's why I blocked him." So he said, "There's no hard feeling there." So I'll just put two of our two questions from Twitter into our chat into our chat. Oh, there. well, we have to decide who uh, who does the questions. I'm sure we're just going to do them, but yeah, um, no, I was winding Tom up. It was fun. It's always fun to wind Tom up. Um, what can I say? They're always fun when they push back. It was a good uh, podcast. People should go and find it on the Guna Talk. Uh, me and Tom talking for now about podcasting yeah. and why he left. And uh, I miss, I said, I miss Gimli. And because he used to refer, which got me onto this, you saying that he used to refer to me as the fat oaf. He called me a button monkey. And I missed, missed with uh, Jace as well. But sometimes, uh, who was that? The actor. Oh, I went through this before. He um, used to drink a lot. Fat bloke. Died filming. Oliver uh, Reed. Oliver Reed. I said uh, that sometimes the, the most interesting podcasters are the ones that are at the extreme of um, of doing stuff because they don't really care. And some of the shows Gimli used to do would be stoned and drunk, and some of the shows with Jace would offer out to fight the listeners. I'll find you and I'll kill you. Those shows were <laughs> they were interesting, but you you can't really sustain it though. No. And uh, yeah, Let's those put it days, this way. The glory days. Huh? Let's put it this way. They're now both not on the podcast, and we only get 51 listeners uh, <laughs> to the show. A now. thousand before when Jace was hosting. Yeah. Maybe I should have left and let him carry on with maybe, it. Maybe. Maybe that was the way to do it. It's people throwing money at us, like like, like when he's out in the town down in Cardiff and there's women chucking their knickers at him. Jesus, them were the days. But, yeah, something would have gone wrong eventually. And uh, Yeah. Um, so we'll we were, you were saying that your missus said you're not allowed to give the, introduce me the way. <laughs> yeah i might wait though I'll, I'll wait i'll wait till i'm actually hosting and then i'll do it and all the listeners can have it but i was very i was very happy with my uh little put down for you oh um, I didn't maybe them. i'll that do it means... now maybe i'll do it now uh i was gonna say the man who uh when his mother said uh you are what you eat he stopped eating vegetables because he didn't want to take any fucking chances <laughs> Oh, that goes along with the funniest chant of thing I've ever heard at football was when the warm up and then we're sitting in the wheelchair section. I said this before, and then someone kicked the ball and one of the players and it came over and hit and as as it hit one of the, the people in wheelchairs in the head, someone shouted out, Mind the vegetables. 
<laughs> people might be offended by that but i thought it was funny <laughs> so you can either laugh or you can cry so there you go yeah. um so That's thunder cool. said uh oh. um so gimli and james to be welcome back to the one there's no fucking chance i mean gimli <laughs> doesn't even he blocked everyone and uh, i think Tracy made it very clear that if you ever see me in public he will strangle me and use my bones as a um as a broth <laughs> mm -hmm. so no sadly those days are gone I missed that yeah I, i'm sure we may have another i'm sure the other jason may make a return at some point um he has flirted with those things at some point so yeah i'll get in the hybrid squad yeah i mean that's where we get all the guests now straight into the hybrid squad um, no fuck around no at get him in early at least when you moonlight as a podcast people want to watch not, not <laughs> talking about true. farming in the full crop rotation in the 14th century or whatever the bloody the, the thing is is that what uh, french football weekly is i think crop <laughs> rotation I think, that, I think that's what they're talking about when, when talking to about. plant your seeds i think and, that's it and bemoaning crows and their lack of um self-awareness i don't and even well, know what that means yeah. <laughs> that's just who gibberish who knows uh, just make sure that you get him before the show to turn on his mic and do the there you go. It's connected. Well done. And try and be close to it. Don't do a, 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 a Chris and be a spinning round in your chair like you're in the, the dentist chair in yeah. Euro 98 or wherever it was. 96. Good God. It was a World Cup in 98. I remember that one. I don't remember 90, Euro 96. Um, but yeah, maybe okay. if I do I enough won't. podcasts, um, I can repair my headset. My headset's broken. Just there. Why don't you buy a new one? You're fucking loaded. Look, you've got ladders as far as the eye can see. I've got three bikes behind me now as well. With, uh, oh, updated no. the number of bicycles. I know, sorry, I'm showing off. Um, you can go in the basket on the front if you like, Danny. Oh, I had a dream. Anyone listen to LBC? I'm going to go slightly off topic yes. here. You know, um, no, talk radio. Uh, oh. A bloke called Christo. A chubby, fat, gay bloke. He's um, brilliant. We follow each other on Twitter. I was listening to him in bed the other day because he was on at four o'clock in the afternoon, and I must have and I fall asleep. And it's, you know when you're listening to something and it incorporates itself into your dream. He's a very flamboyant gay bloke. I dreamt that I was in um, Park um, uh, uh, Parker's Peace, is it in Cambridge? Massive big green where all the people are. I'm in my double. I'm in my double bed with a with door next to me, and my, I'm going around the green on my bed. Christo turns up with a bar with a with a bar, a bike with a basket mm -hmm. and he comes up to me and goes, um, Do you want to make love? I said, How will that work? I'm not gay. And he went, That doesn't matter. <laughs> and then I woke up. <laughs> oh, and the moral of the story is you had a sore ass and uh, a lot of questions. I did two days later. Jesus, that um that pulled pork. That certainly pulled its way through my intestines. <laughs> <laughs> lovely oh, though just though 4 p.m every weekday on talk radio at the moment he's one of my favorites we follow each other oh. on, on twitch and he had the same car as me he's got the same convertible mercedes but i bet he sits in his um yeah well, the uh film room wrestled naked i don't know and i don't really like him um that's not it we've done that work sucks yeah. Uh, funniest chant by middlesbrough 2004 there's only one job on t side referring to their player <laughs> ah, Jose Jazeera job. Very good. That is funny. Um, your brother Matt has been in the YouTube chat, um, Loki, so you want to have a word of him, make sure he's behaving himself. Well, I think we slightly drifted off a topic there. What else were we going to cover? The the Wolves games here, uh, yeah, you were talking Wolves about games. that magnificent results. Yep. Two, I mean, result. One of the hardest teams to beat, and we got six points out of six there. Magnificent comeback. Every time I see anything with that Arsenal at the moment, we are improving week on week on week. And mm. I think the if there was um, a scale of 1 to 10 and we are in the middle, beginning of the season, we were dropping down all the way down to about 2 and we lost all those games and it was all over. Now we're going back up again. And week by week, whether it be the tactics against Liverpool, whether it be the, the, the first half against Man City, or it be the comeback against Wolves or going to Wolves and beating them, slowly everything, we're going further up that scale towards being the, the process working. And if we have a good summer this, this summer with players, are you fully confident that this summer we are going to get a decent amount of money and get decent players that we need because we didn't panic and spunk it on players in in january that we'd be going in the summer oh actually we don't want these anymore yeah i think we will trust the process it looked at um you can see without bringing in or getting rid of uh 
you know, getting rid of the players that you know, we might have said, oh, you know what, we could do depth when you know Lacazette's not scoring and Martinelli, you know, what happens if he has a bit of an off day or he gets sent off wrongly for the uh, first occasion ever of double super quick yellow cards from Michael Oliver? Uh, and we, you know, maybe need a um, mercurial <laughs> um, Gabon striker who might turn up for a game. Um, instead, let's just get rid of him because he's disruptive and he can go and score a million goals and add a his way through another contract. <laughs> That's um, it. Yes, that yeah. should be a phrase. He he is ad bioring it in Spain. He is ad bioring <laughs> it in Spain. He ad bioed it for uh, his new contract against Fulham, yeah. and he will ad bioer it again when Barcelona say, um, "You know, we put that." thing in your contract where it said you've got to behave otherwise we're going to tell you to fuck off um well you didn't behave so you got to fuck off now and then he'll go and score a million goals for someone else um who knows maybe it'll be in the ipl or it'll be in the mls or qatar or portugal who knows he'll go somewhere else and score another gazillion goals get another huge contract and then add a buy or his way again through it so um yeah i think we've shown that when now Mikel's kind of got this tight knit group, and you can believers. see the substitute we, a lot we of call believers. It a cult? We could call it a cult. Should we call it a club? A football club. <laughs> we'll call it a football club. That's what he's got there now. Is this group of players that you can see even with the substitutions, the options he's got off the bench now, they're very he's limited in what he's got, which is a good thing because he had a hell of a lot of, um, he had too many choices basically, which is where we'd see those weird subs. So it's like, why are you bringing on Reese Nelson? Or why are you bringing someone else? And it's because he's just like, well, he doesn't really know what he's going with. And now, yeah, as Avon Tedson said in the uh, chat box, maybe we'll refer to it instead of a club of football, We'll call it a squad. That's yeah, maybe a football squad. We'll call them that. Um, but yeah, you can see with the limited amount of players he's got, he's got fewer decisions kind of going around his head, and he's kind of got more a clearer judgment. Um, so I think we've got. Um, I think that's what's going to help us through this is kind of galvanizing, getting uh, players back in or getting players that kind of buy into the system as well. I think. That's where we'll have, uh, you know, Isaac, if he's the player we go for. Um, it's certainly not a guy who um, agent wants him to move to Juventus as soon as uh, he decided he didn't want to be at Fiorentina anymore. Um, he's doing all right out there. Um, who else could we get? Um, DCL? I mean, sorry? DCL? We could get DCL. I think Dave Davidson in the chat, he said uh, Leipzig and Kuku, who is a winger. Um, I don't think he will sort our striking Ooh, needs. One out. I did see playing in France, um, David something Messi, David Messi. No, oh. uh, um, uh, Jonathan David. That's it. I watched him play Sorry. in the Champions League last week. He was rubbish. Yeah, Canadian. Don't rate him. Um, no, don't say that. Jeff will never come on. Uh, Holland from London. Oh, bless him. Yeah, um, that man's a hunk. Yeah, uh, I think those are the ones that I kind of look at. Um, yeah, there's plenty of players that will be out there, and I think we will pick the right ones for the squad we've got. And oh, we might continue building on that English core. And yeah, as you said, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, fingers crossed that uh, Lampard's going to do the job I expect him to do and get Everton relegated. Because um, <laughs> he is a awful manager. Awful manager. Um, yeah, formerly knows that. If you want to find out um, Chris Carpenter's views on Jonathan David, please check out the French Football Weekly podcast because you know you won't get those views on here anymore. Um, and if you ask a question, it's going to be answered because no one else is going to send them questions or listen. I say that. <laughs> it's probably a perfectly fine podcast. I mean, I've just been mean to him. Probably why he's never on it because we're always horrible to him. <laughs> yeah, we are. That's probably never why. thought of that. I like Jazz. Um, Jazz is nice. I don't have many interactions with Phil, but yeah. Um, Hey, I follow so right me and Jeremy follow each other on, on the Twitters. Yeah, just been um, doing our people. We need a name for this podcast. It's uh, it's down as question marks because I, I couldn't think of one and I didn't want to presume. But I've been doing an Adibayor that doesn't really, I mean, although <laughs> I love it, 
that is uh, not really overly ex- explanatory of the rest of the, of the podcast. So like, in the yeah. chat, we're going to give the, one of the listeners a chance, all of you a chance, and we pick one of yours. So we just need no more than about five or six words, nothing too long or complicated, and, and just, or rude. just your ideas. All good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said rude, but it's got oh, to be rude. Good. Oh no, no rudeness. We don't do no we don't rudeness. do rudes. Uh, the ninety sixth, yeah, you know, the ninety sixth minute podcast. Mm. Oh, uh, much to do about nothing. I don't like that. Mm. The running, the running part, po- the Russian, the running pod- Russian, Russian podcast. podcast. Mm. <laughs> the tanning the ginger speak. <laughs> That's gingerist. Can't say that. The arse drift about. Um, goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Abramovich. Mm. No, it's quite good, but we get caught up, and then we'll have Chelsea people listen to them. And um, with my only interaction of Chelsea fans this year, um, let's just put it this way I don't really want them um, in there because they're a sensitive bunch. They are they? a bunch of racist fucks. I mean, they are a <laughs> sensitive people. I was gonna, I was gonna go homophobic, but um, well, they, yeah. they can't, they're not that because they, um, they... they got told we're not allowed to call them rent boys anymore, so they're not allowed to come round to uh, Brighton and tell me and ask me where my boyfriend is. Um, no, no, that definitely didn't happen. Um, no. So I definitely didn't call them nonces in response. No, um, no, no. They're only not homophobic because they couldn't spell it. <clears throat> yeah, that is true. Um, what else have we got? Um, congrats to Ask Blog on Twenty Years by Stefan Selby. Oh. Um, we could do that. Yes. I saw there was a lovely gushing. Um, message from Chris Carpenter about Ars Blog, um, where I think he's setting up the um, the fan club for Ars Blog, which I think is called Ars Licking. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, a very very gushing one where he said that he it's the reason why he doesn't pod anymore is because it's too good. I think that's the message in there, something like that. No um, sleeves, please. We're Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> um, do cry wolves. Um, that might be something about that. Something about you don't cry no wolf. Making up. Po- I, I have done about uh, four hundred and seventy-two of these so far, and all of them would be better than anything you lot have suggested. Uh, I don't. Th- to be fair, I don't think Mr. Boblex was putting in a uh, suggestion for the title of the show. Of it's a shame we didn't go for the kid that went from Germany to Juve. Uh, <laughs> That'd be a great name for a show. <laughs> like who? What? What the fuck uh, does that mean? What kid? What? <laughs> oh dear. Um, Yes, yeah. um, the pod father, correctly, because people call me the pod father. I'm not. I'm um, ABW. Would have been, I went through that with Tom as well. We were the fifth Arsenal podcast that I knew of at the time. I think only two still exist. Ask Blog was first started. He's the podcast in 2007, started blogging in 2002. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do podcasting, that and a, uh, an Arsenal forum I was on. And anyway, I go and listen to it, and uh, it's a good show. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Andrew. He's been on the pod quite a few times. Um, he's always said, if you ever need me on again, let me know. Maybe we should get him on again for his dulcet tones. He's a wise and fact, man. And the fact we can't get anyone else on from ABW well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't really listen to it all that often, mainly because I don't like his friend. Oh, James. McDonald's. Yeah, I like. I like. Got a blog. Yeah, I don't like him. I don't know why he's got to where he is in the world. I mean, how the hell the other he could hire him and not hire Ask Blog? When Ask Blog is a lovely bloke and uh, uh, knows everything about Arsenal, mm. but could be the pod uncle. But I think the pod mother. That's uh, this bald and. Well, I'm not sure the way, who makes that the pod children and whether or not Andrew wants to be in that relationship with you. <laughs> <laughs> never has wept. Um, well, never has, you know, he might be our next uh, midfield signing. Who knows? Was he the one with the, the Chris Carpenter hairstyle? Because I thought he and the beard, he looked quite cool, quite hipster yes. He'd yeah. fit in well at Arsenal. He is Portuguese as well. But obviously, surprisingly, he plays for, Paul, he plays for uh, Wolves. Dances all over walls. Now that Ooh. that's got legs. There we go, Dublin Maguna. That's more like it. After me insulting him, saying um, I have no feelings for for, for Ireland, oh. he uh, he told me off. I said, "Don't you dare, Joe Rogan, me and take me out of context." <laughs> I do like Ireland, I like the people, I like everything, but I have no allegiance to them. Is what I should have said. Oh. Never going to catch me with an Ireland shirt going. Come on, bless ya, stick it in the yoke. 
I'm not even sure what that means. I Sean was amazed the last time she went over there because everything is the yolk. Oh, go get the yolk out of the yolk. Not as in egg yolk, just that's what they call things, the yolk. Oh, can oh. you get the yolk out of the yolk and pass me the yolk? Sean said, you're referring to yolk as everything. How am I supposed to know what you mean? And then laugh at her for being English. <laughs> Um, oh, Mr. Bob Lex has put one in for um, we celebrate when we want, and I think maybe we could go with um, we only celebrate when we're winning. No, maybe. No. no, I'm stuffing the dances on walls is still the best yeah. one. The pun on the film dances with walls. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only Egyptian. I'm only Egyptian. So, well, the, the thing was going on. Other than that, it's just a four uh, percent thing. <laughs> As soon as Salah decided he was taking the fifth penalty in a penalty shootout where it didn't go to five penalties, that was the point where you decided, not for me anymore. No. Um, Avon's put here, breaking, Usmanov's 512-foot yacht has been seized by the German authorities in Hamburg. That would oh. be funny. That's what, £40 million pound yacht? <laughs> nice. I don't know. I, I, I have no concept of how long um, 512 foot or feet what, is what do you know meters meters i mean 512 meters. feet sounds like it's long enough to be an oil tanker we'll put it that well, way there's there's 3.3 feet in a meter so that's oh. roughly so that's going to be 512 170 170 okay cool it's long you wouldn't want to it's a long way. Hands and knees no I don't think so. But then uh, apparently that's how it gets cleaned. Um, but who knows? Uh, oh, I think uh, Dublin Gooner has helped for yoke. Is the uh, is the English equivalent might be a thingy. Ah, I'm going to go and get oh. Dublin Gooner's thing because at the moment that's winning. Um, so I'm going to go and put that up here. In notes, uh, in Guna with that one. BX, BX Gunner to 81 has helped me out with how big 512 feet is for a boat, and he says it's a fucking big boat. Ah, um, yes, yeah, great name for a podcast. A fucking big I get boat. That. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bob, it sound, sounds like the size of a football pitch. Um, Stefan, only yacht tossers measuring feet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, how many knots is it? Um, not his speed, yeah. Okay, fine. I don't know. Um, oh, Jimmy H coming with podcast name of the sinking of Roman ship. I mean, if we'd played Chelsea this week and beaten them, that would have been perfect. Yeah, beat them and then they go bankrupt. Um, oh, Bulgarian Guna came in and just said, uh, just coming here to drop a like. I mean, why aren't you staying, Bulgarian Guna? We've got excellent chat today. There's your two favorite members. Two only members of ABW. Two survive. <laughs> We're not the Beatles. There's only two of us left. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, me, and the ladder. That's it. It's not even a ladder. That's the annoying thing. No, it's not. It's a it's trestle not. for drying clothes. I've just bought a new washing machine. It's not a trestle. It's not a trestle it? either. No, it's a screen, which we took the screen bit out of it with the view that we were going to re um, like, cover recover it and just haven't got to it so that's what it actually is for all of those that had bets on it um paddy power or other bookmakers will now pay out on it being none of the options in which it was a screen with no screen ability um yeah uh should we go through the questions because i think we're going for um i think we know which one we're going for can't we questions we go for Dublin Gooners. well you've got questions haven't we People ask questions oh, for us. There's something I wanted to show before that. It is, oh. uh, someone said Spurs 14 years about a trophy. I made this up. No, that's the wrong one. That's fucking Bolton. <laughs> I was taunting my mate who's a Bolton fan. Um, where is it? It's going to be... I remember that one. The, it's a great stat where Coventry hadn't finished in the top half of the table for something like 15 years. That was a quality stat. I did like that one. There we go. It's called oh, Shit Spurs. I did wonder oh. why that other one's called Bolton W. Um, Makes sense. Here we go. I edited this so it's not perfect. Like I didn't change the season. So it's mm. 2021 twice. But that is, I think, um, how many is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 13 years. 25 seasons, 
one trophy. I mean, look at that. Harry Kane has been top scorer for two, four, six, seven, eight seasons in a row. Mm -hmm. And one fuck all. So then I slightly edited it. Yep. But uh, the gist of that is 25 seasons, one trophy. How are they considered part of the big six, Josh? It's ridiculous, isn't it? I think it probably helps that everybody likes Harry Redknapp and uh, in the media. So they'll go for, um, yeah, they're just like, oh, we like him. Yeah. I mean, there's the back in the proper era when they had uh, you know, Gus Poyet being a top striker. Uh, got top scorer, 14 goals. Some good ones in there. Do you know there. how you say his name in Uruguayan? Pujet. Oh, is it Pujet? I don't know. Yes. Gustavo Pujet. He's Gus Poyet to me. It is to the his Brian fans, where he got, <laughs> got sacked on match of the day. That was funny. He got sacked live on match of the day. Well, he didn't. He was sacked in the morning, but his agent hadn't phoned him yet. <laughs> so uh, he only found out when I think Mark Chapman turns to him and says, so Gus, you've been sacked by Brighton. And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it's because his agent hadn't phoned him yet to say you've been sacked because he was doing TV all day and been able to get a hold of him. But that was a good one. Um, but yeah, um, I don't really know why Spurs are so big. And to be honest, I don't really want to dwell on it either. No, because... I mean, someone okay. did this. So there was teams like... Um... Who had won? Who had won the, the League Cup? A small team had won the League Cup. Wigan? No, they won the yeah, FA that, Cup. FA Cup. That was it. Swansea um, won the League Cup. Yeah. So they're right up there with Swansea and below Wigan, as in. So, mm. yeah. And they don't even consider Leicester as part of the top big six when they've won the yeah. FA Cup. They've won the League Cup many times, and they've won the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, did you want to do these questions? And we've been going an hour and sixteen minutes, and we haven't actually got to the point yet. No, that is true. But will we ever get to the point? That is the no. question for the listeners. <laughs> no. Will we ever get to the point? Um, which ones should we go through first? Should we go through the ones that the, uh, the chat box have asked us? You can do, and there's a couple um, from Twitter. Yeah. Well, let's go through this one from Jimmy H32. Um, Danny, Arsenal get fucked over by the refs, get told to get on with it, and if and with it, Everton got a formal apology <laughs> from Mike Riley phoned up um Frank Lampard um and I uh, can't remember it was Bill Kenwright who phoned them both up and uh gave a detailed apology for or a detailed reasoning for why his team didn't get a handball decision so Danny what's going on I'm about to show you what's going on um this this is what's going on people so I need to uh Hide current comment. Uh, for the people at home on the bus and having a poo, this is a map of uh, Great Britain and the, the UK and England is highlighted on it. And it shows all the places where all the referees are from. There's three from Bristol, two from Birmingham, one from Nottingham Leicester area. There is two from the north, uh, top northeast, uh, three from the northeast ish. And the rest of them, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them are all from the Manchester Liverpool area. Josh, that. Is that a good enough explanation on why we uh, London clubs get absolutely fuck all from this? I think I'd also like to add that um, Mike Riley had never spoken to Frank Lampard and he thinks he's a little bit of a hero for him and he just wanted to meet him. That was it. He just wanted to oh. have a chat with Frank Lampard because he quite likes him. Oh, um, but Mike Riley, is, Mike Riley is also from the um, one side of the Pennines. I'm not sure which side, but he is from one of those sides. Um, and then we've also, we don't forget the um, guy down in the sea as well. Um, he is the Australian referee. And having seen him um, in the flesh at the weekend, um, he, he, was ref oh, he was fucking awful. Is that why they told him to get in the fucking sea? Possibly. Um, rather than mock up a little bit of Australia and just plonk him in it. Um, yeah, he lost control of the um, Brighton Villa game in the first half. He dished out eight yellow cards in the first half. Oh. I think. No, seven yellow cards in the first half. I take it it was like a Royal Rumble then. Oh, it was awful. Villa were um, quite, should we say, industrial in their tackles. And there was definitely a case that some, it looked like one of those games. You know, you could tell about 20 minutes in that someone's getting sent off, but you couldn't mm -hmm. work out who it would be yet. Um, I had my money on Douglas Louise. 
I thought he would get sent off. Um, He's got annoying, a nasty side to him. Annoyingly, um, Gerard took him off with uh, after 60 minutes, so he didn't get sent off because he would have. Um, he was getting thoroughly um, irritated and putting in a lovely little snide tackle. So who knows? We need to replace Granit Xhaka in the summer, and we were linked to Douglas Luiz before. I think we've got the guy that will give away all the penalties and get red cards for us um, in him. Um, ah, yes. Right. Right. Shall I ask you a question? Go for it. Right. Comments here. So we've done that one. Julio Salmondo currently on the run from the FBI. Oh, he's in Canada. He's gone to Have Vancouver he? Island. Oh, is he yeah. hiding in Jeff's basement? I think he no, might no. well be. Uh, he's got a false moustache, and he, refer, he answers the name of uh, um, Dave. Dave <laughs> says, um, "Who would you look?" Would you look at selling Pepe in the summer? Yeah, I would. Let's go rid of him. Um, yeah, I think he would do the job that we need from him in the rest of this season in terms of we need him to bring in, score probably five to seven crucial goals for us, get a couple of assists, and then we get that new striker in. We'll have um, you know, Saka, Smith-Rowe, Odegaard. If Pepe wants first-team football. or Sorry, Martinelli as well. If he wants first-team football, then I don't... Or regular first-team football. He might get it with us in terms of depending on European fixtures. But to be honest, would I look at trying to get an upgrade or someone who would be a bit different, someone closer to um, maybe Saka um, in terms of style of play? Or someone who's a bit more reliable from shooting on the edge of the area because i think that's the thing we're missing um i can't remember if we we're talking pre-show or during the show we've talked about a lot of things but we were talking about zh um i think he's one of those players that that's what i'd look look for is a player who if you're struggling against a team who's got um you know their backs up against the wall um you need someone who can just basically go right we can't play through them Let's just smash it into the um, smash it to the top corner. That's what ZH can do for you. Um, Pepe's shown shades of it, but it's not necessarily been reliable. So, um, yeah, I think I would look if there's an alternative out there, but I'm not worried if we don't sell him. Let's put it that way. Well, hopefully he'll be off to yeah. Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona give us a load of million pounds for him um, yeah. and then pay him 20 quid a week like they are to a Bamiang. When we bought him, uh, four times fifteen is sixty. We paid twelve million for upfront, and then fifteen million pound for the next four seasons. So we're still paying for him. So maybe we can get the final payment. Um, the uh, I think they call it layaway, don't they? Or, or, or credit? Or they got the bloke, the, the people who come around and loan you money at the door. I think they'll be banging on the door, and they will have the last payment. We can say just go and get it off of uh, Barcelona or someone like that. Um, Gary doesn't seem to think that um, Xhaka is leaving. Of course he's leaving. He's just leaving in the summer, isn't he? Yeah, I think he'll leave. Uh, he might stick around, but I think we're going to upgrade our midfield, we'll put it that way. Mm. And I think we bring in a player that's better than Xhaka. Um, yeah, I think so. We might even sell Thomas Partey as well. And I might even push Kev's buttons again on the hybrid squad tomorrow and say let's sell Thomas Partey because he had a good game for us against Wolves. <laughs> Him and Jacka uh, deserved a standing round of applause, the pair of them. They both played fantastically. They were excellent, but I think Jacka right now is doing something that he doesn't necessarily... He's out of his comfort zone, we'll put it that way, in what he does, and we could definitely upgrade um, on a better player that is doing the job Jacka is currently doing right now. At number six, where he was, we could go for there. Avon said, yeah, Declan Rice would fit. Um he is the player that I think will actually be the next England captain. So Declan Rice. Yeah. I'd love to have him there, but maybe. Calvin Phillips. Yeah. Um, not necessarily as box to boxy. I think he was very good actually in the Euros when he played that role. Um, so yeah, How he's coming back. It's coming off a big bad injury though at Leeds. Mm. So I think we'll he had one comeback and then Brian broke again. Yeah. But could you see both of those two? Um, would they be the pair of them is in our midfield? I mean, they're both. Uh, is Declan Rice Irish or English? I can never remember which, which is loyalties. Uh, he plays for England. That's as, he... that is as far of the fence and as far of into that discussion that I'm going. 
that Declan Rice plays for England. Um, but I think he might have tried to have been sniped a bit of um, the Jack Grealishes, put it that way. Oh, there you go. This is why um, he's played for the Republic of Ireland under 16, 17, 19, 21, and three games for the Republic of Ireland. Mm. But 27 for Arsenal. What, how did he get? Were they all friendlies or something? 27 for oh, Arsenal. 27 for huh? England. For England. He's played for 20 for Arsenal. Um, no, they changed the rules. Uh, oh, well, unless they were friendlies. But now if you've played less, fewer than four games, so three or less, or three or fewer, uh, games for a country, uh, you can still move um, to represent a different country now. So that's how Jamaica managed to call up a load of um, people with mixed heritage. So they've got a great, crazy team now, um, Jamaica. They've got Michael Antonio, haven't they? Yeah, because he'd played a couple of, he's got a couple of England caps, I think. No, I'm just looking now. He's had none, but no? he's got three and six for Jamaica. Oof. I thought he played for England as well. I thought he had. Um, who else have this? they got? Um, Kimar Roof uh, went to now represents Jamaica. They had a good couple of players for the Premier League. There's definitely a couple that represented England. Um, they were trying to go after someone else. Well, they've only won know. one in 15, and that was very big Honduras 2 0. Oh. oh, well, can't talk further than that. Um, we've got another question from Mr. Boblex. Ooh, lovely. Um, it also looks like Gwen Doozy is gone. We spoke about that already. We sold him nine million. Um, and Terea, uh, I think, yeah, he's leaving as well. It's about twenty million for both of them. How would you? Oh, use that's what I was going to say. Okay. I had a dream about Terea that he come back to Arsenal like yesterday and said, "I'll play at the weekend." Um, <laughs> yes, the and uh, the deal with Mavropana at Stuttgart. Stuttgart are going down. The deal yeah. was if they avoid relegation, then they could buy him for five million. Now I don't know if they can still have him, but there's no obligation to buy him, so we'll yeah. get him back and we can flog him for fifteen million. That'd be yeah. good. That'd be good. But yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll use some of that money. Remember, we spent 150, uh, 150 million in the summer, so I'm sure we'll use some of that money to go across and uh, pay for that because. I'm sure Stan doesn't want us in the uh doesn't want to what's the word I'm looking for? Um doesn't want us to be in debt, basically. Um and he doesn't want to be in debt. Uh and he's not gonna be writing off 150 billion pounds in debt because um he can't get that money back anyway. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, uh we've got some other questions as well, didn't we, Danny? From We did on from, the Twitters. From Twitter. Mm. Uh, I don't think I even saw us tweet. Maybe we did. Did we tweet to say we're live? Should yeah, uh, we did. And John retweeted it. So John is actually alive. He's the only one that did. It's nice of him. Oh, thanks, John. <clears throat> yeah, cheers, John. Uh, where were we up? Uh, come, private chat. That's where it is. Right, we've got one from private Stephen chat. Mills. He oh. says, uh, how do you think the upcoming sale of Chelsea will affect Arsenal's transfer policy then in the summer window? Mm. Now, we covered it a little bit, but we didn't say if it'll affect who we're going to go for, because surely it will do, won't it? Because that's just one less big fish that is going to steal the players that we want. Yeah, that's what I expect. But right now, because we don't know who's going to come in and what their plans would be for Chelsea, um, that's the thing I'd kind of look for is, yeah, who's going to come in and what do they want to achieve? Because we they could end up with another... Um, you know, big spender, someone that wants to pump more money into Chelsea. Um, that would be the worst case scenario for us, is if uh, they end up with the Newcastle situation. Um, but I think, yeah, um, it could be difficult if they end up with somebody who isn't necessarily as, is maybe a bit more cautious with their investment. Then, I mean, there's one less team going after uh, Erling Haaland, let's put it that way, and we need a striker in the summer. Um, mm. so who knows oh, yeah. wouldn't that be wonderful if we signed him because he's doing nothing at Dortmund Dortmund's an absolute mm. pony at the moment mm. but he's always injured he is he is always injured um, mm. so maybe we can get him as backup and he's up as our starting striker Perfect. but he does seem to be quite grounded though as someone who is probably has the ability to be the best striker the human race has ever known Mm. His old man probably gives him a clip round here, makes him put the bins out. So he's quite grounded, <laughs> unlike the rest of these prima donnas. 
that have uh, that have been mouthy little pricks their entire life. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, he's he's got a solid head on his shoulders. Um should we go for the question from Matt L. Roberts as well. Um, hello, Matt. Thanks for your hello, question. Hello, Matt. Thank you very much. Um what areas would you like to see improved before the start of the season? Not just transfer wise and behind the scenes. I'd like to see uh the, the wheelchair season tickets going back to being zero in an executive box with free food and the heating on all the time and one box per person so i can bring all of my abw mates with me to the game so that'd be just uh that'd be josh and carl and nick and probably femi and uh i bet chris will turn up for that you <laughs> oh. wouldn't yeah just to boo and throw rotten fruiters when we beat man united six nil maybe maybe yeah um realistically uh. though i think i'd like to see us go big but not too big. I like 40, 50 million pound players. We, I reckon 200 million in the summer, a decent clear out like I had like, uh, at nine o'clock this morning. Um, but oh, Jesus Christ, how stank. I woke up this morning, I could still smell it. Um, yeah, so a, a decent clear out and no, no hangers on, no one who doesn't want to be part of the process. I think even Jacker has now turned around and he believes in the process as as much as it's uh, we use the p word far too much lately but it is it's an it's an actual living breathing entity what what do you want yeah i think what i'd like to see a little bit more of um i think continuing the good work that we're doing in terms of fan engagement so we can see fannies <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, more fannies. That's what we more need. More fannies. No. Hello, Dom, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I think what we need is you know improving that fan engagement that we've seen. Um, we all know COVID's over in England. Um, it's officially over at the end of March when you, we don't even need masks anymore. It's all done. Thank you very much. That's it. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be the. Um, that's what I'd like to see. We know that. Uh, since the Cronkies taken over and since, you know, the We Care Do You, they have improved that. I think, well, you, can, you can't improve any fold from zero. Um, it's infinite fold. But yeah, that's what I think I'd like to do. Um, it sounds like they're doing some stadium upgrades as well. Um, at least yeah, that's what I've been got. complaining yeah. the stadium's really shabby. Mm. Let's give it a nice refresh. Um if only there was a break where there was no one going to Stadia and um, they could have done the ref uh, renovations then. But, you know, hindsight. Too much sense to it when there's no one there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and I think there's a lot of other things we can kind of continue to do. Um, continue our green credentials. You know, um, the match day is purely done on green energy at the moment. I think we could continue to do that for the rest of um of the infrastructure that we've got talking of green stuff josh before you carry on with your point anybody there fellow tassimo or, or um, pod user they used to have a, a system where you collect them all and then you could post them all back and it was completely unreliable they've now if you contact tassimo go to the website they will send you a, um, some bags where you put all your tassimo pods in the bags and then you can drop them off to any collect plus place so I got three of them because we get me and Sean's and Sean's mum. We've all each got our and my brother. I think he's got one as well. And those things aren't recyclable. But if you send them back to Tassimo, they will do it. And that is really important because mm. I am very uh, I believe a lot in in the green recycling stuff, even though it may all go in the same skip. Makes me feel good. The fact that I do it, Josh. Yep, definitely. Um, yeah, I live in a I live in a city which has a green council and all of your recycling goes in the same bin. Um, what can I say? <laughs> um that's i think that's more on, brighton um, pavilion isn't that the person brighton pavilion it's caroline lucas or oh, was caroline uh, lucas not anymore. i don't like it oh and is she she's australian isn't she i don't know i once rang up the talks they were talking about it on talk radio or lbc and you know, i before the election i mean i voted greens last time anyway but the time before that i rang up and said what's the point you like the mate I said i'm never vote. i wouldn't vote for anybody who wasn't born in this country you, know, you can't say that it's racist i said well she's from australia well, what the fuck does she know about the UK? And then what happens? We get a bloke as Prime Minister who wasn't born in this country. Oh. The, the feffle, you oaf. Moving on, Josh. 
Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, less about that American that is in charge of us. Um, yeah. You know, he, oh, he had to give up his U.S. citizenship to be there. So he couldn't, he can't run for president. Let's put it that way. That's USA, wonderful. you've dodged a bullet there. It's one of the decent things about America. You can only be president if you were born there. One. One of the good things. But you can still be a <laughs> human what's One it. of the two. And the two <laughs> benefits. You can be a human what's it. Um, or you've got to be American. Those are the He's coming options. back in 24. He's coming back. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Don't They're all going to will. die. If, if, if Russia don't, uh, don't win this war, Putin's out. They don't care about him anymore. Um, oh, right. We've done all the questions, haven't we? Oh, you is have. It? Unless there's anything else coming through. I don't think there is. Um, I think we've got a couple of people that want uh, Jude Bellingham. Yep. I would go balls to the wall for that boy. He was excellent. He's been excellent. Um, Trump was born in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong oh, one. Let me just think it was... Um, uh... What's his name? Bush Jr. was born in Kenya. <laughs> uh, no iPads, says David. Uh, really, people come to a game to watch an iPad. No, okay, that's about taking a phone, point. yeah. They asked me, in my 400-odd games at football, did I have many photos? I said, no, I was busy watching the matches. I mean, you would think nowadays, if someone started now and went for football for the next 20 years and 400 games, how many photos they'd have? They'd have an entire library. They'd have an Amazon library mm. full of them. All of the stuff. Oh, look. Yeah, but when you went to, uh, when you started going to football, um, to take a photo, you had to, you know, the guy had to kind of uh, sit down, put that cape over the back of his That's head, it. and you had to sit still for 20 minutes before you get a photo. Oh, dear. Oh. Um, that's it. That's true. Yep, definitely. Um, should we wrap up the show? I think so. I think, I think that is about it. Have you got any shout outs, Danny? Um, I'm going to say Mr. Tom Canton. Yes. Mm. Um, actually, I'm doing a little something with Sophie. She's away for a few days, and she's she's uh, she's poaching another ABW person. This that woman has no shame. She wants me to do something special for her. What well, oh. I'm going to say involves a hula skirt and lots of oil. Uh, yeah, Tom. <laughs> uh, he, he asked me on to his podcast. It was uh, talking about um, how ABW started and uh, the, some of the people that have been on and how I started it and a little bit about podcasting. And then we drift off like I always do and end up talking about absolute nonsense. It's always mm -hmm. nice to have a chit chat with Tom. And he was saying that, uh, that he also has problems getting people to turn up for podcasts because for some reason people have lives, which I do not understand. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Go and go to the Guna Talk and go and give them a, a – well, don't give them a follow. He's got too many followers. If you're going to follow someone, go and follow the um, – the uh, Guns and Yellow Ribbons, Fergus and uh, Trev, lovely gentlemen, just like myself. Good. Yep. Have you got any? Uh, no, you can always. Um, actually, Are you going to do Bumlick and your your new boss? No, no. Well, I was. Gonna say, I'll say exactly what I say uh, on the Hybrid Squad, but the opposite, and say, um, yeah, you can find me on the Hybrid Squad occasionally. Uh, I will be there tomorrow for the tactical um, tactical squad. Yeah, that's what we call it. That tactical squad. And um yeah, but always ABW first. As um Danny berated me whilst I was walking through uh Marks and Spencer's to try and get a call in the caterpillar. What can I say? So a big shout out to Reminis. <laughs> I said, when are you available? And you gave me a list of dates that you're doing stuff with the hybrid squad. So uh, I, yeah, said, and oh, I said avoid ABW that. First, I <laughs> It was more of a. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. didn't know what the the appropriate emoji con for that was. I mean, you what, never do. What's yeah. Nick putting stuff on YouTube? Nick, why is that a, a YouTube link? What's it for? I'm gonna click on oh. it because it's Nick. Normally, I don't bother. It is. Oh, it's uh, yeah. Nick has put a link in there because Nick is a very good man. That is the link, people, to me and Tom's podcast. How, how many people oh. has it got? It's had 81 thumbs up and 1375 views. And if you go and put anything in the chat there in the comments, I will reply to it. But yes, um, I'd like to know what people thought about it. I'm surprised I didn't get in any in trouble, actually. Mm. Some stuff was said. Hula and oil. Um, it shows so much well it does, yes. Yeah. Um, I'll let you close the show, Josh, because I opened it. And uh, otherwise, we'll never end it. 
Yeah, um, I will say thank you to all of the guests that have joined us this evening. Um, big thank you to Chris. Big thank you to Carl. Actually, no, I can't take the piss out of Carl. Carl's leg. Thank you, Carl. Um, congratulations to making through the apocalypse. Big shout out to Femi, who's on holiday. Big shout out to um, Ellis, who I don't know what Ellis is doing at the moment. But Probably changing to a snappy. Possibly, or changing his own now. I'm not sure what's happening with him now. He doesn't know what day of the week it is. Uh, big shout to who else can we do for him? Big shout out to Simon Holiday Collings. Um, although I bet he calls it Holly Bobs, so maybe not. Um, who else? Um, yeah, everybody Jeff, in the chat. Jeff box Arsenal well. was going to be on Jeff last Arsenal. Week. Jeff Arsenal was going to be on this week. Jeff Arsenal was also going to be on this week. I can say that for every week. Um, yeah. He was going to be on, but he doesn't appear. Um, and then it will be a good thing when he does turn up. Um, big shout out to FK for, you know, we tried to get him on this podcast now, but we are below him. Um, what can we say? Yeah. Um, We're in our rubber dinghy and he's going by on, on, the, on the, the Queen Mary 2, which everyone didn't sink. Yeah, he's he doesn't... a pirate. Hello, that's moment. someone who joined a couple of weeks ago, oh. and I thought, could that be Chris? Yeah, they I joined. Uh, it's nice Thank to you. see you, Mr. Pirate, or Miss I'll do Mr. Pirate, or, or alien person, person pirate. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I think it's all our Tassimo talk. You know, it's a bit. You know, so they do a latte pod. Maybe that's what you uh, you need to ask. Is uh, just tell FK, send him a send him a Tassimo capsule. Which uh, we're doing a good latte, and then maybe he'll come back. I might on. go and have one now, actually. Yeah, um, I might. I might, I've got some rolls. Might have some. I had a Deliveroo yesterday, and then I tipped the person ten percent, one pound fifty-three. I'm sure they appreciated that on their little bicycle. Um, get me you spoke. The fuckers turned up in a brand new BMW Five Series. I think they might have stolen it. Hmm. Maybe no. I can't assume about how people made their wealth. We're in enough trouble already uh, about talking about Chelsea. We didn't say hello to Nick or Cactus Cash or, or James Rell Stokes, who's working on Stokes. a new headset. And Jock, I mean, Jock and Daniel, Jock. I'm not really sure they're part of ABW. They're in the group. They're in there for Bants or for Jock they to be picked on. And who else they are it? in there, so we've got some noise in the uh, group. Otherwise, it would be desolate. Nothing happens it, in there. I think I, a, I put a couple of comments in there and nobody replied to me. You, it's all sad. All BMWs um, are stolen. I had a BMW one time, a red one. Did you steal it? Very nice. It got stolen. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it got stolen and set fire to. <laughs> it may well have been because I owed someone some money, but mm, don't do. You can't even say pikeys anymore, can you? Although Richard calls himself the pikey, says uh, I'm Rich the pikey. So that's what he would say. Um, oh. You refuse to watch the latte <laughs> firm with old FK who invented ABW. Oh. Sad on. time, Steph. Go on, Stefan. Go and get your. Yeah, there you go. There's my shout out for. I'll go to FK and um, who hasn't invited. Has he invited anyone from ABW on the uh, latte squad? Is he speaking to you, Danny? No. No. He told okay. me not to even watch. He said, stay away. I told you to close the show, Josh, So, because I'd, I'd have taken five minutes waffling about shit, and what have you done? Waffling about shit. Um, and final shout-out to the Swiss Warrel Ramble, who hasn't invited me on to the Gooners pod yet either. Um, what, so never? I've been on it once. I think I was on it with Jason, but I think that's because he invited Jason, and Jason said, I'm going to bring some annoying little ginger kid with me as well. Um, and I turned up um, because Jason wasn't available. As in Shredder. So pick the other one. Um, yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Shredder, if you're watching. We miss you. Hey, Shredder. Come back on, please. That's, that's all I'm saying. Um, yeah. Oh, hang on. I can click the button as well. I can end this show. I don't have to kind of... I'm doing nothing. There we go. All right, people. Thank you for listening. We've been ABW. You can catch us at the weekend where we're going to do some Watford previews. It could just be Danny. It might be me. Daddy doesn't know this yet. It's a secret.